We in this country often, perhaps unfairly, refer to our own Prime Minister as a robot, the Maybot. You are the complete opposite. You are very relaxed. How do you achieve that in your position? Well, first of all, good morning, Britain. Good morning to you all. Uh, and I must tell you, yes, there are moments in our careers when we have to be, I won't say like robots, but we're not allowed to show feelings uh, or emotions when we negotiate uh, difficult treaties, etc. I think that we all need to strive towards modernizing our relations among not just uh, politicians, but all of us, and that we politicians should be closer to people and behaving a lot more like people. You've talked a lot about the sort of Brexit um, that you would like us to have and how important the UK is for the EU, which Croatia is a relatively new member of. Um, what do you make of how things are progressing? Well, the UK is not only important for um, the European Union, the UK is important for Croatia and the Croatian people. And what we want to do is, aside from these uh, European-UK negotiations, which unfortunately at this point of time are not proceeding that smoothly, what we want to do is have an excellent relationship between Croatia and the UK that traditionally perhaps was not as great, but it was actually great to talk to Her Majesty the Queen, uh, who cannot talk about political issues, but nevertheless, we could talk about the friendship between the people, uh, and to talk to Theresa May, whom I respect greatly, about the, the modes of how we can bring our close, uh, countries closer together after Brexit. I must say personally that all of us were very sad to hear that the UK would be leaving. Do you feel that the EU now needs to be more compromising? And instead of putting obstacles in the way? Because, as you say, us leaving will hurt, in some respect, both sides. Well, of course, every deal involves compromise, and that compromise means both sides, uh, obviously. Uh, I hope that the compromise that we achieve will resolve especially the difficult political questions in the way that there are no leftover open issues that will need to be resolved later, especially in, term in terms of um, the relations with your neighbour, Ireland, uh, the border regime and everything else. So I think that we need to look at the deal that we don't try to win over each other, but that we try to make it as much as possible as a win-win situation and part as friends and allies that we will remain, um, at least in the context of NATO, and that we will uh, continue to work as the best of friends, because that's what we are. And I think that soft border between the UK and Ireland would help a lot to sort of put behind some of the uh, unresolved questions of the past and continue to work for today and tomorrow uh, of um, the uh, prosperity and of friendship between our countries. Because let us not forget that the European Union was founded not only on, uh, on the ideas of the single market and the freedoms of the market, but also on the values that uh, underline uh, an alliance that has been actually the most successful one in history and an area that we want to be the most prosperous and the most free in the world. Madam President, finally, would you uh, encourage then Michel Barnier and those who are negotiating for the EU to be more open to the ideas being put forward? Because unless they do, uh, we are in danger of a no deal. Well, of course, I would want everybody to be more open. And in negotiations, it often happens that we're stuck um, at a certain point and that we cannot proceed, we cannot go on. But what's important is to keep going, to keep talking and to keep finding situations that will lead to those little steps that actually mean a great deal uh, in breaking the impasse. So again, I am a bit concerned about what's going on right now and whatever I can do on my part, I will do in order for us to part on really good terms. But of course, uh, there, there are interests of both sides to consider. Do you think there's a different kind of pressure on women in politics and a different kind of attention? Uh, and do you sort of empathise perhaps oh, with absolutely. others, female leaders, that you have to deal with that? Absolutely. I don't like to focus on it because really the team that I work with, which is almost 50% women, 
uh, but um, the, the people that I work with, I always choose them based on their work ethics, based on their professional capabilities. And I never look at anyone as a woman or a, a male or of any different uh, background, etc. So um, I must say that it does bother me, but I've gotten used to it through years and years of practice and self-control. And uh, what I want to do is work together with uh, all of my female and male colleagues because they're indispensable for that and work especially with the media to look at us uh, in the terms of our substance and not just the form. I know that we cannot avoid the, avoid the fact that women look different and we should not be afraid of our femininity. I think that we need to show and demonstrate our femininity because it's not weakness. It's just something that distinguishes us from men physically, biologically. But again, our minds, uh, our desires, our work ethics should be what guides us in life. And I often talk to our own media, please um, do not think about me as person. Please think of generations of young Croatian women who are looking not just up to me, but up to you as well to provide guidance. Please look at all the young men who need to be able to look at their female colleagues and somebody who is completely equal to them in every walk of life. And let us not divide ourselves into categories of men or women, but let us divide ourselves in categories of those who can, who want to, uh, who uh, put the best effort, who produce the best results, and who can move the society further without any prejudice toward anyone else.